Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at our plating setup. Now we've been talking about this plating setup for quite some time in other videos. Uh, see our saltwater etching video up here somewhere. Today I just want to kind of demystify and explain some of the findings that I've come to with the plating in general. Now just a huge disclaimer, first of all, I am not advocating that you guys go and buy a bunch of you know, acid and high voltage raw wire equipment and start playing around with it willy nilly. Do a lot of research before you get into this. Know why you're gonna be doing plating in general. But we are hoping that our upcome, that this video and many videos to come are going to help demystify this aspect of the jewelry making trade and hopefully be educational. So why am I plating silver on top of silver? Seems kind of counterintuitive, right? Well, this is the piece that we are going to be plating. Very nice. Well, it's actually kind of grotesque in a way, but it's, a, it's an interesting piece nonetheless. Notice the color. It's got a nice shine to it. Um, it's been heavily polished. It's got a little bit of that oxide in there, but this isn't necessarily the type of finish that everyone wants. Getting into all those little bits is going to be very difficult in terms of polishing. The best way to do that would be chemically. Now this one is the exact same thing, but this has been silver plated. So this has a pure silver coating and you can see the difference. The color is much whiter on this one. It's also very clean in every single detail. And overall, pure silver doesn't tarnish nearly as fast as sterling. So this is technically what you would call a shop finish. It's definitely not the most widely accepted way to do things, but it does have its uses. For example, the color. What this also can do is cover fire stain. If anyone's been doing a lot of soldering with silver, you probably know what I'm talking about. There's like a little red patch that appears on your piece. And essentially what that is, is the copper in your sterling silver rising to the surface. And the only way to really get rid of it is by sanding and heavy buffing. So plating over top of it will cover it up. And do you want to know what the best part is about this? This piece has not been polished. This came pretty much straight out of casting into pickle. Then I filed off the sprue from the back, cleaned it, and plated it. So this one, if you look very closely, you can see some of the details, especially in these little kind of like cheek horn things have been worn down. On this one, they're actually still really sharp. So there's definitely a good reason for doing this. So let's talk a little bit about some of the tools that we'll be needing for this. Let's start with the power source. This is also known as a rectifier and you can get these from uh, various sources. You can get them from Pepe Tools. They have a whole series of them, but essentially all it really is is a DC power source that is adjustable. That's the very key thing. It has to be adjustable and you have to be able to adjust the current accordingly because not all of these solutions work at the same voltage. This silver solution, for example, works between two and three volts, whereas the copper solution works between one and two volts. Uh, others might require half a volt. Others might require a lot more than that. It really depends on what you're doing and also how big of a solution tank you're working with. Now with our small setup, these 1000 milliliter beakers, this is more than ample. This power source we got off Amazon for I think about 150 bucks. I'm just kind of ballparking. Um, link in the description below. We got this one off of Amazon. It is rated for 30 volts, 10 amps, and that is way more than enough. Moving on from the power source, we also have this little contraption over here. This is a lab grade, temperature controlled, magnetic mixing machine thing. <laughs> it's weird. Anyway, uh, we did a little unboxing video about that, and we also got this one off Amazon. If you're interested in some of the details about that, go check out that video, because we explain a little bit more there. Essentially what this tool does is it agitates the solution with a little magnetic stirrer, and it can also simultaneously heat it with this temperature controlled gauge down here at the bottom. So aside from that, what you also need are anodes, which are these things here. Anodes are essentially the positive power source. These are the positive lead. 
you always connect the thing that you're plating to the negative lead. Essentially what that means is that the electricity passes through the anode into the solution and then whatever you're trying to plate will then stick to the thing that you're plating. So just a little note here, I have four different anodes. So this one, we have a nickel anode. This one is meant for the nickel solution. This one is made out of copper and it's meant for the copper solution. The reason why we use these two in those two solutions is essentially this recharges the solution. As the electricity passes from here through the solution to the workpiece, little bits of this nickel are entering back into the solution, keeping it charged. Unfortunately for others, it's not quite as easy. For example, you probably don't want to be having a pure gold anode, which would just be astronomically expensive. And um, for the most part, these solutions are, aren't really meant to work in that type of way. So in this one, this is our silver bath. This one, we have a stainless anode, as it is called for. I did ask um, Gesswin about using a pure silver anode, but it was again, the, the issue of cost came up and um, the solutions just again, are not meant to work that way. So you have to follow the instructions very closely. And lastly, the other one that I have over here, which is a little bit overkill, frankly, I should have got another one, but you know, I just wanted to be economical. This one is made out of platinized titanium, which means that it's a titanium base and it has platinum over top. This one's typically used for gold plating because platinized titanium does not get plated with gold. Some of these solutions contain cyanide. Now, all of these are specified not to contain cyanide, but that doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. So do your research. And then lastly, and arguably the most important of the solutions is called Teva Clean. That's what this um, nuclear green <laughs> type of stuff is. This is basically an electro cleaner. So what I'm gonna do with this piece right here is I have it attached to a copper wire, which is then hooked up to the negative lead. And that will then be submerged in Teva, which has been heated to about 55 degrees Celsius. And I'll be running a current through it. What that does is it runs a current through the piece. Well, all of it actually, but through the piece more specifically. And what you'll see are little bubbles that come off of the item. And what that's doing is blasting essentially all of the grease and contaminant, uh, polishing compound, what have you, off of the surface, making it absolutely clean. Because if it's not clean and we go into a plating solution, you'll get a spotty um, kind of resist, you know, like a big fingerprint on the top of your piece will definitely show up when you do a plate and it'll be very uneven. So it's very simple. We have the piece lined up here. My uh, little heating thing here has like a little tower, which is very handy, I found. Uh, not all of them have that, so I guess another good reason to go on Amazon and get one. And then here we have the positive lead to the anode on the bottom. This is now submerged and I'll turn this on. Now at the moment we're running 2.14 volts through the piece. I'm going to adjust this up to three volts because that's what it's rated for. And it's also easy for when we go into silver, which is rated for three volts as well. Now, assuming you don't get this exact rectifier, get one that at least has coarse and fine adjustment. I'm finding that if I didn't, if I only had the one, that knob better be really, really exact because if I just move this one millimeter, I go from three to like 3.8, which is way too much. So we're gonna let this piece electro clean in the Teva solution for about a minute. It really depends on the size of the piece that you're working with. For smaller jewelry, you definitely don't have to go that long. It's kind of at your discretion. A lot of these solutions come with a a between, like a minimum amount that you're supposed to work with uh, in the solution, but there's really no exacts. It's kind of, you, you learn as you work, does it look right? Nope, okay, back in for another 30 seconds or so. So we've been letting this piece uh, clean for a few minutes and it should be done by now. Turn the power source off, drain any extra that might be stuck to your piece. In this case, I've kind of got like a big 
empty cavity inside, so a little bit is pooled, and rinse that off in water because you don't wanna be contaminating one solution with another. Bearing in mind that you have to have a different water cleaner for every single solution because you don't wanna be cross-contaminating them. In this case, I'm just going from Tiva Clean into the silver solution, so I just have the one. Now you'll notice that I'm not wearing any gloves. This is not exactly good practice. Do as I say, not as I do. Get some damn gloves. So our piece is now very clean. And what I'm gonna do just before I put that into the solution is I'm gonna switch this anode from the Tiva to the stainless one in the silver. And we'll turn that on. So I have a dedicated little copper wire here that I'm gonna be using for silver plating. In other words, it's going to, the copper is also going to be plated in silver. You don't wanna be wasting too much of the metal that's in solution on the pieces that are just holding your work. You ideally want it to go onto just your work. And we're just going to drop this into the side and let that do its job. The longer you leave it in the plating solution, the thicker that metal coating is going to be. So this piece has been sitting in the solution for about three minutes and it has deposited a very thin layer of silver on top of the silver. And we'll go back and we'll just rinse this off. So something I noticed is that the deposition of silver doesn't necessarily create this wonderful bright finish right off the bat. You'll notice it's a little bit gray. Um, what, what I've had to do actually is tumble them after the fact. But what that does is it brightens it right up and gives it this miraculous um, white finish that I'm not really accustomed to with sterling silver. Sterling silver definitely has more of a more of a, a coppery tone to it that you can only really tell as soon as you put it right next to say, something like pure silver. I hope you found this informative for doing a shop finish silver on silver plating. Again, I have to stress, use proper personal protective equipment, ventilation, proper equipment overall. Use Do your, all your research beforehand because this is not something to be taken lightly. Know why you want to do this before you start spending money. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you're liked and subscribed because we will be doing more plating in the near future when we start looking into gold plating, where we start to use multiple solutions and uh, it's just gonna be a whole process. So that's gonna be very fun.